You're listening to The Bart Factor with your host, Bart Robley. Hello and welcome to this edition of my podcast, The Bart Factor. I am your host, Bart Robley, and I want to thank you guys for uh, checking out my podcast and tuning in. I'm on uh, YouTube, so I don't exactly know how much tuning is involved. We uh, just kind of turn on the computer and hit play. Not a, not a lot of dialing in of frequencies. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank you guys. I also want to thank um, everybody who sent me messages or texts or phone calls after my first podcast um, and uh, said that they liked it. I really appreciate it. So um, this is number two, number two. And the sponsor for uh, this podcast is my website, drummerswag.com. That is my sponsor, my website. (laughs) Talk about shameless self-promotion, right? Check out my website, drummerswag.com. I have uh, have all kinds of cool stuff on there for drummers, t-shirts, educational material, all sorts of stuff. So check that out. So yeah, uh, that's what this podcast is about. It's going to be uh, geared towards drummers mostly, but also I think that other musicians can uh, gain insight and gain um, some knowledge and maybe have a few questions answered for them from this podcast. And uh, hopefully I can uh, help some younger musicians or people that are new to touring or recording or whatever the subject matter may be. Uh, avoid some of the pitfalls that uh, maybe I fell into or I've, had, I've seen other musicians make mistakes um, or again myself. So today what I want to talk about is something that I've written a few articles on and I've done um, some video blogging on and stuff like that and that is playing a backline drum set. This week uh, the group that I play for the Sam Morrison band is going to be flying to um, Green Bay, Wisconsin to play a show out there and we're it's kind of a big festival that's going on with three other bands and we're going to be playing all backline gear. Now if you're new to touring and you haven't been on the road a lot, that's what's going to happen. You're going to have to come and play, uh, you come into town if you fly into a gig and you're going to play a backline kit or a kit that is provided for you. You're not going to take your own drum set on the road. Um, So I think it's really important that you are able to sit down and play a drum set that's not your comfy, cozy drum set that's in your uh, private practice place at home or in your band's practice place. And sometimes that can be a little bit taxing. So what I want to do is in, in this podcast, give you guys some hints and some suggestions that will help you um, play a drum set that is provided for you. Um, First of all, I think that it's really important to, you know, I'll kind of start with the most obvious one. I think it's important to be able to play on drum sets other than yours. A drum set is an incredibly personal um, instrument because everybody's built differently, you know, different heights, uh, different arm lengths, different leg lengths. And, and I'm, I'm tall, so, you know, I'm six foot five. So when one of my friends comes in, and sits in with a band, and they're a little bit shorter than me. They have a little bit of a hard time reaching, you know, reaching out and getting the bass drum pedal or reaching the cymbal sometimes, just because I'm a tall guy. And then sometimes the exact opposite happens. I go over and see one of my friends' band play, and they ask me to sit in, and they might be shorter than me, so I feel like a, a giant playing on this little drum set. Um, but that's a good thing because you get yourself used to playing on other people's gears. You don't want to get up there and start moving stuff around. You just want to sit down and play. Um, And being able to do that will help you in a situation where you are provided with a backline kit. You'll just be used to playing on a kit that's a little bit different than yours, right? So if you have some friends that are in bands or you have an open mic night or a jam night or something that's that's close to your home, I really suggest that you go and do that. And not only is it going to make you a better player, but again, in a situation where you have to play a backline kit, you'll be used to playing on different kits. It'll be set up differently, it'll be tuned differently, it'll feel different, and you just be kind of used to it. The same thing can go for taking drum lessons. When you show up to a drum lesson, I always tell my students the first thing to do, you know, when you get into the lesson is kind of get the kit ready for yourself, you know, raise the snare drum, raise the throne, um, 
Uh, but you're not going to, for a drum lesson, you're not going to completely reset up the drum set. You know, you're going to kind of play what's there and just get the, get the uh, snare drum and the hi hat and the and the throne or the ride cymbal in in place uh, for you so that you can play it. And then you you know you sit down and you play. Again, that will carry into playing backline kit. So that's really the most obvious. Now the gear itself. Sometimes when you show up to play a backline kit. You know, you kind of get drums de jour. <laughs> Sometimes uh, I've heard Frankie Benelli say, actually, I said that years ago, and then I heard Frankie Benelli, I've seen him post that on, on Facebook a lot, drums de jour, so I love that. Anyway, um, uh, drums de jour, you show up, and sometimes it'll be great. You know, sometimes you get there, and it's a good backline company. Uh, usually a backline company provides everything, not just the drums. They provide the amps and the instruments and everything. Uh, but anyway, that'll be a good company. I'll have a good drum set, and you're good to go. You know, maybe it doesn't have your exact heads that you use, but if you have a little bit of time and you're the only person playing the kit, you can get up there and tweak it into your specifications and tune it up to where it feels right and sounds right for you, and 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 get it set up like your comfy, cozy kit at home or in your practice place, and uh, and you're good to go. Um, but sometimes not. Like in this situation that I find myself in this weekend, I'm going to be playing the, I'm going to have to share the kit with three other, or two other drummers. There's going to be three of us playing this kit. Um, so when I get up there, I'm going to make sure that I have a few things uh, ready for myself to go. I'm going to make sure that, uh, you know, the throne is at the correct height and the snare drum is at the correct height. Um, I will uh, make sure I'll give myself enough time to get in there before the gig and move a few things around that I need to. But for the most part, I'm just going to set up and play the drum set however it is set up uh, to play. I'm going to take a few things with me to make the drum set a little more like home. So what I suggest to anybody when they find themselves in this situation, whether it's their first fly-in gig or their 20th fly-in gig, I have a little flight case. It's a little um, uh, um, approved flight case that I'll put underneath the plane, and I'll get a TSA lock. They have these really great TSA locks that are a cable lock. You can buy them at Walmart. And I like the cable lock because on the flight case, they have what's called butterfly clips. And the cable lock will go through that butterfly clip and they can, and it locks it secure. And then if the TSA wants to go in and inspect it, they unlock it and uh, they inspect it and they just put the lock right back on. In that case, I take my bass drum pedal and I take my in-ear monitoring system. I make sure that it's packed really well. I put the in-ear monitoring system inside of a uh, uh, inside of a, a smaller box. It's actually a, a, a little ammo case. It's that I bought at Walmart for ammunition. It's it's made out of steel. It's really good and heavy duty. I'll stick um, I'll stick the in-ear monitoring system in there with a couple of pieces of foam, and then I will put that in the case along with my bass drum pedal, and I'll lock it up and uh, throw it underneath the plane and I'm good to go. And so then that way when I get to the gig, I have my bass drum pedal, I have my in-ear monitoring system, all I have to do is really plug it in and, uh, and then they give me my XLR to plug into it and um, I'm, you know, again, I'm in control of it and I'm good to go. The bass drum pedal allows me to have the feel that I'm used to uh, on my drum set and, uh, you know, it really kind of helps for for the playability of the drum set, if you will, if that's even a word. But, um, you know, having your own bass drum pedal is, is uh, kind of, you know, kind of nice. It, you're, you're just kind of used to the way that it reacts underneath your foot. Now, that's pretty much what I take. But some of the things that I would suggest to you, maybe in your, in your arsenal, uh, you like to have a few more cymbals. Maybe you have a couple of splash cymbals or you have a couple of certain bells that you like to use. Uh, uh, for certain sounds. Well, what I, what I use is I like those multi-clamps. Um, you can get them where they have one, they'll hold one or two uh, extra little boom arms or something like that. And all this stuff I'm endorsed by Gibraltar. So I have a couple of different styles of Gibraltar clamps. And then I like those little short Gibraltar um, telescoping boom arms. Uh, I can stick those on an existing cymbal stand and, and, um, and you know, 
get in uh, get a splash symbol in there that I want or a or a bell in there. Um, I used to carry my own symbols on the plane with me, but I, 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 I'm endorsed by Sabian. And uh, so I'd always take my own symbols, but I've kind of found over the years that a lot of times, especially if you're just flying in for one night and it's in and out, that's just more of a hassle than it's worth. Um, usually the backline companies are gonna provide you with good symbols. Um, and it may not be the brand of your choice, but you know, again, it, it's, it comes back to what I was saying at the beginning of the podcast, be used to playing different gear, be used to being able to adapt to those different sounds so that when you, you know, when you start playing, you're not all weirded out because it doesn't sound like your comfy, cozy kid at home. So, um, anyway, that's, that's kind of, you know, what I try to do. And some guys do, they want to take their symbols with them. And I get that. I've just kind of, as, as time has gone on, I make sure that, uh, you know, I, I just kind of don't like to carry as much stuff around the airport. Um, and then this seems like it would be something that would go without, you know, I wouldn't even need to say this, but I've seen it happen. Um, bring drumsticks. <laughs> I've seen guys show up to gigs, fly gigs, and they were being provided with backline. And they were really surprised because there was no drumsticks there. Make sure you bring some drumsticks with you. So, again, they, you know, it seems like they would, you would think to bring sticks. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I've, again, I've seen people show up to a backline uh, gig and not have drumsticks with them. And uh, then they either have to rush around find a music store and buy a few pair of sticks or bum some sticks off of uh, somebody else. Or if the backline company has some drumsticks, uh, you know, in their truck or in their gear, uh, they may not be the size you use. You know, if you're used to using, you know, two B's and they've got, you know, three or four pairs of seven A's laying around, that's going to be like going from playing with, you know, tree branches to playing with toothpicks. So you want to make sure you have the size of drumstick that you use. So just bring a few pair of drumsticks. Again, you know, a lot of people, I've, I've seen people not do that. And then the last little piece of gear that I bring with me, um, and, and again, my sticks, I have a little, you know, I have a smaller stick bag that I take on fly-in dates that only, I usually only take like, you know, three or four pair with me. Um, and then, of course, I have a tuning key in, in the stick bag. But um, I always bring, I have, a, I have this little Gibraltar net thing that, that holds a few extra pair of drumsticks. I always take that with me, too, because I like to have drumsticks on both sides. I like to have drumsticks on my right side over by my floor tom. And then I like to have drumsticks on um, my left side as well, you know, because if one breaks or you drop one, you got them on both sides. So I always, I always take uh, that along, you know as well my little you know stick holder again you probably if you guys have been playing for a while you've probably seen them in catalogs or seen them you know at your favorite music store it's just a it looks like a net and the and you know clamps onto a hi-hat stand or a cymbal stand throw a few pair of sticks in there works great so anyway that's kind of and oh you know what else i almost forgot to mention this um bring some extra cymbal felts with you um it, you know, because let's say you get to the gig and they don't have cymbal felts and you didn't, you don't have extra boom arms or multi clamps with you, but you have a special splash cymbal or a special bell for an effect that you like to use. Um, you know, you don't necessarily want to piggyback a splash cymbal on top of a crash without a felt in between them. Um, so bring, you know, have a, have a little bag with a few extra cymbal felts in there. Um, and uh, that will help, you know, alleviate you from, you know, having any damage to your symbols if you want to piggyback something or just put a symbol upside down uh, on, on top of another symbol. And actually, that's kind of one of the things I've been doing more often th if uh, than not, uh, rather than taking a boom arm and a clamp. Because, again, if you take a boom arm and a clamp, it's not a lot of weight, but, you know, every time you throw something into that, into your, into your luggage... It adds weight to it. And a lot of the airlines nowadays are cutting back so much that they charge you for, for oversized bag. They charge you for bags that are, you know, they're going to put underneath the plane. And if you're trying to carry everything on uh, the plane with you and, you know, you've got 
you know, three things that weigh four pounds inside your, in your, in your backpack that you're carrying on the plane with you. It kind of gets heavy after a while. So anyway, um, hopefully that was kind of helpful to some of you younger guys and to some of the uh, players out there that, um, uh, that, uh, you know, haven't done a lot of flying gigs and, um, and you're going to play a, a show for the first or the second or the third time flying in and, you know, you kind of learn as you go, but uh, those are kind of some things that I do. And hey, if I forgot something, if you're a drummer out there and you're listening to this and you do a lot of flying gigs and there's something that you can't live without and you like to take it with you, please leave it in the comments below um, or send me a message or something like that. I mean, that's, that's what this is all about. I'd love to hear your guys' feedback. So anyway, that is my uh, next edition of the BART Factor doing uh, fly-in gigs and playing a backline kit. Again, I hope it was helpful. Please uh, look for me. If you like this, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And um, uh, please look for me on the net. My website, my main website is bartrobley.com. That's B-A-R-T-R-O-B-L-E-Y.com. Also, again, check out my other website, drummerswag.com. Find me on Facebook and Instagram. And thanks again for listening. I will see you guys in the next episode of The Bart Factor. Have a great day.